Спасибо. So, привет, everyone. I'm working on my Russian for a while, and this is the only word that I can learn. Привет. And also, there is a surprise at the end of the presentation too. So today, uh, actually, I would like to start for thanking you for being here. Uh, this is my third time in here. I, I, I think I'm now a veteran for Defest Corky. So it's always a pleasure because Nizhny Novgorod is, was the first actually city in Russia that I came. So I always wanted to visit to Russia since my childhood. So it was like a dream for me. Today, uh, we will talk about design systems and how to understand the perspectives in them as a developer. Because as designers, we are designing, the, creating the design systems, but at the end of the day, developers are going to code it and make it alive. So I want that the two parts of the process actually should know the details and, and the reasons that we use design systems. And the content is quite basic, actually. I would love to start with the definition of design, then, then the design systems, and how to create them, then how to maintain them, because the most tricky part is to maintain a design system as it is. Then I will some hints and, of course, bad jokes, then questions. So what is design? Actually, there are a couple of definitions that we can do. So what do you think? Is it making everything good? Who thinks like that? Can I, can I see the hands? OK, there is one person. Actually, you are wrong, buddy. It is not making everything look good. Design is more than just aesthetics. It's a different approach. And for the last couple of years, it's actually a huge trend in the industry. Everyone is looking for product designers, UX designers, researchers, UI designers. There are lots of designers. And there is a you know, very popular topic out there, the, the product design, the UX design, and design systems. So design actually is a method of problem solving. We are evaluating the problem. We are trying to you know, understand the reason of problem. And we are trying to create solutions for them. So then, what is good design? If it's not all about aesthetics, well, we can define the good design. So there is not a simple answer for that. But the answer is being simple. So as long as you keep the design simple, as long as you try to avoid being complex, your design will be better than anymore. And also, good design is immeasurable, so we cannot, you know, count them as, as 1 to 10. We cannot point them 1 to 10. A good design is observable and accessible. So you, you have to you know, understand the philosophy behind the design. And you have to really tell your story behind the, behind the solution. And good design cannot be achieved with you know, glossy buttons, very good shadows, master fill wireframes, and uh, all, all that UI thing. Because Design, at the end of the day, is, is a merger of pr principle into something it is meaningful and deliberate. So every design should mean something. It should have a backstory. You know, it should have a, 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 a point that tells you the problem and the solution. So what is a design system then? Why do we need a design system to accomplish a good design? Actually, design systems are not a new thing. A pattern language by, you know, Christopher Alexander, Sarah Ishikawa, Murray Silverstone, and Max Jacobson, and so on, is written in 1977. So it's not a new trend. We've been using design systems, of course, basically, not advanced as of today, but we were using pattern language and design systems since 1977. I, I should suggest you to read the book. It's a really good one with a couple of... It's, it's kind of hard to understand because it's been like 15 years since they, they wrote it, but it's, it's still good. So what is a design system? A design system is a collection of reusable components guided by clear standard, to keep it simple, that can be assembled together to build any number of applications. So we are not actually building a design system for just a website. 
we can use that design system, we can use, extend this d design system to use in mobile. Like, like the material design system, you have, you have a guideline for mobile watch, smart watches, mobile devices, desktop devices, websites, and so on. So a design system is more extended than a UI kit. Just like Legos. You know, when you gather up lots of Lego Legos together, you can build the same basilic. And also a design system is a combination of style, components, and nowadays actually voice. So it is quite scalable and provides consistency between pages and application. So that way you can get the exact experience on the website on your mobile application too. So a design system gives you the consistency the same experience on multiple platforms. And also, since it's clearly defined, you can understand the basics of the function on both platforms. With the set of rules and guides, actually, it increases the efficiency. So you cannot make changes just you wanted to do. A design system has a set of rules, defined guidelines, do's and don'ts, so let's assume that you are working on a small team to, to four to five people and you're creating a design system and one of the actual team members decided to change the you know cards behavior and UI. So this is something you, you this is not something you can do easily because a design system has a set of rules, has some behaviors and also some, some guidelines to, to change the function. That way, it can en enhance the teamwork and actually eases the onboarding of new members. So every time you onboard a new designer into the team, you can share the design system with them, the guidelines, the principles, and so on, so they can understand the philosophy behind it and they will not ask you what is your spaghetti policy in here. So how to create them? The first start point is, actually asking ourselves, do I really need to create a design system? Oh, it's, you're going too fast, buddy. Uh-oh. Okay, let's go. So there are existing design systems over there. So we, we have Polaris from Shopify, you know, fully by Microsoft, and also material design from Google, it's, it's a huge trend. Every big tech company actually building their own design systems for a while. For example, eBay doing it since 2017. Google started in 2014 and finished in 2016 and they've released the material design. So it's a huge thing. And before you start, you should ask yourself, do I really need to create my own design system? Or should I use an open source design system to create my design system's fundamentals? So you can always use a design system like, for example, atomic design system. In atomic design system, everything actually defined as, what the hell is going on? Oh, just let me fix it quickly. Okay. So in, in atomic design system, for example, everything starts with atoms. So you have little pieces of you know, components like a search button and an, in an input field. Then when you gather them together, they create a search field. So it's a molecule. Then when you combine these you know, molecules in together, they create an organism like the header. And these organisms come together to create the templates. And when you start to add the visuals into templates, they create the pages. And that flexibility actually gives you to, to advantage of you know, saving time every single time you want to change something in the, in the system because they are already defined as components and you just need to change the components as, as the way you want to do. For example, we, we created the design systems. It's based on sketch components. This is for an mobile, this is for an e-commerce project. So we, we decided to go with Sketch 
and their components and use the, the design system using multiple components for the project. And this design system has been using on multiple e-commerce projects. We just basically made some tweaks for, for the branding, then used the, the, the design system on different e-commerce projects. And also we have another design system for aviation companies. So again, we have the sketch component libraries and everything is defined in there, even the overlays. And also we have the type kits, colors, brandings, you know, components and principles and so on. It's a well-documented uh, design system. This is one of the advantages of working with an agency as a designer because on multiple projects, you can create multiple design kits, and every time you design a design system, it gives you more knowledge on the topic, and it lets you to understand the edgy, edgy side of design systems. A well-defined design system can, you know, have multiple purposes. You can, you can clearly define the accessibility rules in there. You can, you can, you know. You can define the color you use, you can define the components, you can define the grammar, vocabulary. And for example, if you're working with a voice assistant like, like Excel's presentation before me, you don't actually have screens to work on. So how do you create the design system? You can create the design systems by vocabulary, you know, by, by, the, by, the, vo by the voices, by the grammar, you know, you can define the fundamental parts of the application into the design system. So there are, there are hundreds of things you can place into the design system as long as you well documented it and write a guideline for, for its usage. And in the heart, a design system consists of four steps. The principles, the guidelines, the patterns, and the practices. In the principles, you have to define your goal to create the design system. What, why we are you know, creating these design systems? What is our goal? What we are aiming to accomplish by creating this design system? So it may be calling out, you know, create an easier experience for our users. That can be principle for you. Or you, you know, make them excited about our, our future. So you can start the design, uh, design system as it now, then grow it in time by the principle. And you, can, you should definitely define the guidelines. So guidelines gives you the opportunity to understand how you're gonna use the component. It's gonna tell you do that and do not do that. It's, it's pretty familiar in, for example, most of the design systems like material design, Flint, IBM's design system is also very good um, for that. And also you have patterns. Patterns means the components, the, the symbols, the, the colors, everything that you placed in the design system to create the layouts are actually in the patterns. So they will be definitely be part of the design, to start the design system. And the last one is practices. So, Practices are very important to especially maintain the design system because in the first three part, you are defining your design system and when you come to the practices, you'll see them in real life and you see them how the users interact with your system, how they're gonna give you feedback. And is it gonna be you know, a good design system or not? You will understand by the practices and practices will let you you know, um, make your, your design system better and better since you got the feedbacks from the, from the users. So for that, before you start to, you know, create the design system, you have to pr prioritize what is best for your users. You have to understand the users, their needs, then you have to understand your platform needs, your business needs and so on, and then combine them to create that principle, and around that principle, you will start to create your, your layouts and guidelines, and, and you will see the real life practices. And also, 
the best point is designing for quick reference and glanceability. So at the end of the day, we are trying to use the design system to keep it consistent, easy to understand. And avoid blue screens like that to you know keep your <laughs> keep your users awake all the time. And also, uh, one of the advantages of design system, especially for 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 developers, is keeping a consistent code base. That means you you coded the component once, then you multiplied it as long as you added new features into it. So it's a simple code base. You can use a component in multiple pages for multiple purposes. And that's why a design system is better. Should I unplug and plug it? This is way better what happened in 2013. Because in 2013, I stopped using Microsoft because of a presentation. My computer went on update on the stage. So <laughs> I think. We are way better than that occasion. So you have to design for quick reference and glanceability. This is a key point for design system. And of course, I admit this is just for fun, but you have to play seriously. You know, most of the companies, especially in Turkey, they, they start like to build our new system, we hired and you know our model of business analysts, architects, developers, and you know product manager, project managers, and some smart guy asks, "Great, who's gonna build the UI? Who's gonna who's gonna do the design of the project?" Then there's a deep silence. Everyone thinks that who's gonna do that? Who's gonna do that? Because they don't have the design. Then someone came up with an idea. I guess our intern used one of these UI builder tools. So instead of you know, avoiding this kind of situations, if you're newbie in the design systems, if you don't know the fundamentals, if you know how to start, let's say spend a couple of days by searching for the design systems. There are lots of presentations, medium art articles, lots of YouTube videos, a couple of free courses on you know internet before you start the design system. Because design system, is actually is not a UI kit. Is not something we clear, clarify the colors, the type kit, you know, the screens and so on. It's it's a, it's the system. It's it's a alive system, and you have to keep it updated all the time. So you have to be ambitious. You have to be you know have the courage to start the design system first. Then also you you should. You should try to innovate something on the product area and your approach. So you should focus on the product. You should focus on how you're going to extend it, how you're going to make it better, and completely understand the nature of, of the design system. Since I, before I started to use design systems, actually, uh, you know, I was going the classic way. We were creating the screens, we were making things exportable for the developers, we were handing off the design and so on. And we were getting so much questions than we do right now. All right, so because everything is not well defined, even you clearly write your documentation, developers are most of the time try to avoid it and you know directly start to code the screen. And at some point, they realize something is wrong. And they're going to come and ask you. And as a designer, you should also have an ego to answer the question. So you're like, ah, come on, man. It's well defined. You, you see the screen. You see the button. Just do it. But it doesn't work like that. So it makes you be innovative. The design systems makes you be innovative. And actually, it will change your approach on different topics. You will, you will see them in a, in a different perspective, in a different approach. So, okay, we created the design system. Everything is clear. Our type is clear, our colors, our components, our guidelines, you know, our principle. Everything is solid. Everything is on the market. Everything is great. But 
like I said, it's a living organism. A design system is not something that you can do and left. You have to update it all the time. And this is the, this is the hardest part because as long as you look at your past designs or update your project, you will realize some components are not actually capable of uh, working on the new features. So you have to change them or add new components. So adding new components is a bit easier than changing the current one because in the first phase you were designing it for, for a you know, clear function set. So everything was, was placed in there according to a plan. Then you needed to add more functions into the component. So it is the tricky part. And to await for that, actually, you should always define your folder structure on the design project. You can use Sketch, you can use Figma, okay, you can use whatever tool you want to do, you want to design your system, but the first rule is you should create a successful folder structure and namings. Because namings are everything. Card one, card two, card three, card four, card six is not the best way to name your product. It's like, okay, product card, product card with, you know, buy now button, product card with discount rates, product count and blah, blah, blah. Instead of giving numbers, just clearly define them and, and please at least put a couple of sentences about, you know, how it works and how we use it and why we use it. And the, the second one is, like I said, it's a living mechanism. So every single time, from your users, from the developers, from the product management team. You should always look for, learn, and get some insights about your design system. Companies like Google, companies like Microsoft, companies like you know, Uber, Airbnb, uh, Shopify are not sharing their design systems just for you know, give you an opportunity. They are also collecting feedback from you. So they learn what's missing in their design system. They learn how can they you know, improve their design system and they can, you know, how they can make it better and better. So this is the same tactic. When you create a design system, you should always look for feedback and also learn from your faults and try to get some insights from the users. And like I said, it, in the end of the day, it is developer's job to make it alive, to code them. So as long as you keep clear your, your designs, your developer's code base be clear too. So good code, you know what we, we measure the code quality as what the fuck on time. So in a good code, you have a couple of them, but in a, in a bad code, you have plenty of them. So try to avoid, you know, creating complexity for developers too. If you took the picture, I'm moving on. So then how should we work with the designer as a developer? Okay, we have a design system, we have a bunch of designers, and as a developer, I get some problems to solve with the design system. Or, you know, it's, it's getting hard to understand the document. I don't want to really read the whole long text. So the first point is, don't give them solutions. Like I said, design is a way of problem solving, it's a method of problem solving. So instead of giving us the solutions, just give us the problem and let us solve it for you. It's easier for both of us, right? Uh, because when you come with the solutions, uh, most of the time, they can be personal comments. So I didn't like the color, so I changed it like that. You know, I didn't like the, the, the placing of the button, so I, I changed it like that. Instead of giving personal comments, just try to be more objective and try to tell us your problem instead of your solution. Because otherwise, we get crazy. And we are trying to not show you how mad we are. So that was it. Congratulations, you survived the talk. I hope you liked it. And of course, as a, as a, as a classic,
Mario took the flight. Thank you so much.